here we are. It's almost December, final month of the year. I'm a I'm a naturally reflective person, specifically self reflection, and I'm always trying to become the the best version of myself. I, I think that's the the saying that a better version of yourself and always trying to improve really in, in every facet of my life and spe specifically photography. And at the beginning of 2018, I put very specific goals on myself to uh, uh, that I thought would help me improve. And of course, as always, I, I or as everyone, I wanted to improve at uh, as swift of a pace as humanly possible. And I, and I came up with these goals that I thought would help me do it. And some of them panned out and some of them didn't. And uh, But I, I think though at the end, uh, in, you know, in a few weeks, at the end of the year, I'll be able to look back on 2018 and say that this is by far the year that my landscape photography improved the most out of any year prior. And I'm sure there's some folks out there that would see my work and be like, this guy stinks. What is he talking about? Thumbs down, click next video and just and move on. But for me personally, I, I'm really proud of where my photography has 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 gone in 2018 and where I'm at right now and I'm really looking forward to to continuing to improve into 20, 2019 but I wanted to share just a couple of things that I found that I think really helped me improve this year and the first thing is just be becoming a better planner in the years past, I was just kind of a very ad hoc landscape photographer. If there was just a location I wanted to go to, whenever I could um, get the time to get to get away, I would just go. And that was it. That was really the extent of my planning. And now I've really taken that to uh, an, an entirely new level and have really be, started to enjoy the actual planning process. And I did a video on this uh, a couple months ago, which I'll link above if you want to take a look at that, all about just planning for landscape photography shoots and I absolutely love doing it now I really enjoy that that aspect of the entire uh, photography um, process and I do a lot of virtual scouting specifically with like Google Earth and, and apps for you know of course weather and what and, and like sunrise time sunset times um, high tide low tide is there a possibility of fog are there high clouds low clouds predicted all those kind of things and just becoming so really laser focused on the amount of time or the or laser focused on the time that I was going to be at a specific location just to increase the odds of a productive shoot because I think a lot of people are in the boat where you know I don't, I'm not able to go to a location for seven or ten days or two weeks and just go to the same location over and over and over again and to shoot it over and over until you get that perfect image. A lot of times I'm only at a location, I'm lucky to get a sunrise and a sunset at a specific location. So planning has become absolutely critical for, um, for my improvement. And I'm happy to say, knock on wood here, I haven't been on a shoot at all, not one in 2018 where I did not come away with a keeper. And that's something I'm super proud of because it was a large portion of trips that I went on in 2016 and 2017 where I came away with nothing. And that's something that I really wanted to get away from. And I am happy to say that that's definitely something that uh, I've accomplished this year. And probably the best part about it is I absolutely love it now. I really look forward to uh, the overall planning process. So that's been a lot of fun to, to really perfect that. And the second thing is just keeping things simple. I, I think a lot, of, a lot of times, and I used to do this all the time, and specifically with landscape photography, our subjects are huge. It's the landscape. You know, we're not photographing babies. This isn't wedding photography or architectural photography where you're photographing a building or a smaller subject. Well, I guess sometimes it might be a smaller subject, but for the most part, you're, you're, you're photographing a very large thing, the landscape. And a lot of times you come to a scene and the sky's exploding and you just want to wrap your arms around it all and capture the whole thing and keep it. But you end up with just an image that's just, just it, it, it loses its focus. There's stuff all over the place. It seems kind of uh, distracting. And I've really gotten away from that. And one of the photographers that I have been following for years that I absolutely love is a gentleman by the name of Michael Shanebloom out of San Francisco. His work has been my favorite for years. I mean, if you just look at it, it's all, it's very simple, it's very focused. His images have very few distracting elements associated with it. I just love how clean and simple his imagery is. And, and I'll put a link in the description below if you wanna take a, a closer look at, at his work. But um, he, he, he is tops in my opinion. But I really tried to apply that to my images this year 
you know, when I come up to a scene, ask myself, what, what do I love about this, this, this image? Why do I want to take this picture? And I also ask myself, once I identify what I love about the, the scene, I ask myself, what do I not like about it? What's distracting me about this? And a lot of times, just by rolling the barrel, zooming in, just punching in just a little bit, one, you're going to remove those distractions more than likely. And two, you're going to isolate more of what you love about the scene. And that's something I really tried to do this year. And it really shows in a lot of my images. I created more what I call simplistic images ever this year. And I absolutely love it. And, and it's something I definitely want to, to, to carry on into um, 2019 as well. It's just kind of just, just simplifying things just a little bit more than I have in the past. And the third is really just, it, it has to do with composition. You know, when you, I, I think a lot of photographers, landscape photographers, you, especially when you really start to get into it, you, you hear about leading lines and diagonal lines, repeating patterns and things like that a lot. And I know in the years past, I've become almost obsessed to the point to where that's really all that I looked for. And I think I missed a lot of images because it didn't have the obvious, you know, dirt road or, or S curve or whatever it is, the, the typical leading lines or diagonal lines in the foreground leading the viewer's eye into the image. So I really tried to kind of, I don't want to say get away from that because I did create a lot of images this year that have leading lines, but just focus on layers. And that's what I, I focus on foreground, midground, and background. So just images that have all three layers um, in the scene. And I think that's really helped me out a little bit. One, because it's, it kind of simplifies, uh, at least in my mind, it, it simplifies composition a little bit for me. And it's also created a little bit of variety within my, my crop of photos for 2018, which is uh, it, it definitely a, a, a welcome change. I think in years past, I kind of, I felt like I was taking very similar photos over and over and over again. So this year, focusing on layers has really helped me out a lot. And the layers could be anything. I mean, you could have mountains in the, the, the background or maybe the, the mountains in the, the midground and waters in the background, or maybe the foreground is just gravel or pine straw or a stick or a log. I mean, whatever it is, but it is just as long as there's just clear layers in the image, the foreground, the midground, and the background has absolutely helped me out. It's been a tremendous benefit in my photography this year. And then the last piece of the puzzle, is by far the most important for me. Now, I'm a I'm a naturally kind of anxious person. I'm a, I'm a nervous guy a little bit, and I, I get a little fidgety sometimes, especially when I kind of feel rushed. And just slowing down has absolutely changed my photography this year. This kind of dovetails into the first thing of uh, of being more prepared, but it has helped me to slow down when I'm on location. You know, when I go to a location now, I no longer immediately pull out the, the camera and, and, you know, throw it on the tripod and, and lock it down and get ready to take my photo. I leave it all down, I usually put my bag on the ground and just kind of wander around and really kind of take in the surroundings, get a, a, a good feeling for the area that I'm in and getting to a location 30 minutes or an hour before I normally would has really helped me out. A lot of times I, I want to get to a location at least 90 minutes, sometimes two hours before the sun rises or sun sets. You know, it's not always the case, but just getting there as early as possible just to, to get a feel for the area and, and not try and cram so much into a shoot. In, in years past, I would try and get as many compositions or as many images out of a, a shoot as possible. And now I just find one focal point, one, one scene that I want to capture. And that's what I, that's what I rely on or not rely on, but that's what I focus on. And even if I'm set up and ready to go an hour in advance, I'm not going to break down my tripod and go somewhere else to try and capture another image and rush back here while the lights, uh, you know, fl better. I guess that's the word I'm thinking of. Because in landscape photography, you know, we all want to shoot at sunrise and sunset. And in those moments, the light's only good for a short amount of time. So just being ready to go when the light is right has really changed my photography. And it's also in, enabled me to enjoy the overall photographic experience a lot more too, because at the end of the day, it's not all about the end result, which is the photo, which is something that I was so laser focused on in the in years past. And I think a lot of people are too. And I felt that I was missing so much of the photographic experience because all I was trying to do is just get the picture. And I think that put a lot of pressure on myself. And what was so funny is when I was so focused on the end result, 
I can't tell you how many times I did not come away with a keeper photo, but now that I've focused on slowing down and getting away from focusing on the end result, I, I come away with that keeper image more often now than ever. And that's really helped me out to, of course, obviously enjoy the overall process, but still come away with those keeper images. And now don't get me wrong. I still, I still have my instances when I'm running around like a frantic idiot, just, you know, tripping over myself, just trying to chase something, usually the light or whatever it is. But for the most part, I've made great strides into slowing down, enjoying the process and, and getting those better photos. So it's something that's really changed my photography this year. So I hope the information was uh, helpful for some. And uh, if, if there's something that's improved your photography this year that I that I didn't mention, I'm definitely curious to know what it is. Maybe I can, I can apply it to my photos or, or my photography in, in the years to uh, years to come. So uh, if you have any questions, as always, definitely leave them in the comments section below and I guarantee I will get back in touch with you. And as always, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.